Hey there! Welcome back to Reddit Dating, best channel for cheating stories. Make sure to like and subscribe the channel for more spicy stories. Stunning wife of 14 years, together for 16 years with two children, has been having an affair. I discovered the truth. Now I'm at a loss. I suppose I should provide some context. I am a 40 year old man. She is a 38 year old female. The AP is 30 slash M. We met in our early 20s, dated on and off, and were pals, lovers, and BF slash GF. We eventually married. We have a 14 year old girl and a young boy, 8. The problem is that she's always had my heart. I suppose I realized early on that I loved her and wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. We discussed everything. We laughed till we cried about the silliest things, we shared a love of music and went to many shows together, and we simply liked each other's company. I had never been happy in my life than when our children arrived. We truly made some amazing tiny beings. They are absolutely gorgeous with hearts larger than I could have ever imagined. So far, we've done an excellent job of raising them. If there is one thing I am most proud of as a couple, it is that we created two selfless children who genuinely care about one another and the world around them. I'm head over heels in love with these two. Our marriage has certainly had its ups and downs. Obviously, things can't always be amazing after this many years, that's just marriage. We cruise while we're on top of the world. We were like Maverick and Goose in that we own life. When we were low, before to this affair, we always found a way to chat, find common ground, bounce back, and cruise again. We fought for one another. This is probably why it aches so badly. Rather than battling for him, she picked him. Chris is the name of the guy she met. They used to be co-workers. She left the job and took another, but she kept in touch with him for some reason throughout the last year. When they first met, she described this co-worker. He was always mentioned casually, in passing. Oh, Chris did this today. Yada 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 yet I recall sensing something wasn't quite right, or perhaps I was simply jealous. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it was a sign if ever there was one. Covid has really messed things up in the last two months. I'm not blaming Covid for this, but it didn't make matters any easier. I absolutely battled a massive mountain of despair during Covid. I did, without a doubt, withdraw. I get up at 4 a.m. Every morning, work out in my gym, this has been my routine for nearly two years, take a shower, and then work from home, I've been working from home since March all day. After that, I'd go on Discord or TeamSpeak with some friends and relatives I hadn't seen in a long time since COVID, and spend the night conversing and mingling. I've always been a gregarious person, and I believe I drew heavily on it on a nightly basis. I put forth far more effort socially than I did with her. That is correct. Around this time, she underwent leg surgery, which rendered her unable to walk for an extended period of time. We didn't talk as much as we should have during this time. I assisted her with her care, prepared her food, and assisted her with everything she need. But I did leave her alone for several days without any social engagement, they talked heavily during this time. I'm still not sure why I did it. I can't help but wonder if I had subconsciously rejected her since she had already rejected me for him. Timeline She left her job, where he worked, in January for a new one, they maintained contact. February everything was normal, was as good as it always been, and our relationship felt great. Covid hit in March, I was WFH, and we leaned heavily on each other. We're bracing for what the epidemic might bring. April May everything seemed normal and we started a big garden together. If we had to quarantine and isolate ourselves, we seemed to be doing it well and jointly. We cooked delicious meals, drank and simply did stuff together. He'd start asking intimate questions about her connection with me about this time. Things like, how does he treat you, are all she has offered me in this regard. I suspect the conversations went further than this one question, but she's been telling me little bits of truth here and there and a whole lot of I don't know or I don't recall, so who knows. June slash July she began meeting him during her lunch breaks. They had their first kiss around this time. According to her, 
she told him that this would devastate our families, to which he replied, I guess I'm good with that. This exchange of words has stayed with me the most out of anything I've learned. July slash August they spent more time together during her lunch breaks. They would meet in parks, parking lots, at her workplace, at his workplace, and at his home. They gathered in his wife's bed, stripping naked and making each other they tried to have in their bed once, she claims, but he couldn't get it up. This information, according to her, was a recurring occurrence. And a crucial information for later. In these parking lots, they were having in their cars. I would often tell her about how off I felt while I was depressed at the time. I recall sitting in the shower, staring at the walls, and thinking if it would be easier for her and the kids if I were just gone. I never considered suicide, but I did believe it would be easier if I were gone. Early September her leg surgery is scheduled for early September. She's been stuck at home for two weeks with her leg propped up, with no plans to go. During this time, they exchanged numerous texts. My despair had only worsened, sensations of being lost, as if I were drowning, had become a daily occurrence for me. She's back to work in late September, albeit with a cast and a scooter slash crutch to get around. She ran across him again at his residence, this time in his wife's bed. Depression brought on more of the same. I put forth a lot of effort in my workouts here. I was frequently breaking personal records. I purchased a punching slash endurance post and started boxing slash spar training. October to mid-October they meet in parking lots more frequently and share a hotel room. After pretending to get ready for work, they spend the entire day together. After she leaves the room to go home, she messages me, Phew, what a difficult day, and this day hurts like hell. That text just broke my heart. At the moment, I responded in the manner of a spouse. After a long day at work, he is there for his wife. Reading back on that day now, as I do, looking for signs I missed, just I was at home with our children, working and assisting them with their distance learning. Juggling a child's education while remaining accountable at work is a stressful situation. She remarked he couldn't get it up a couple of times in the automobiles. They had also expressed their affection for one another. Here, my sadness was diminishing, I felt more confident than ever, and I sensed she was off and I needed to know what was going on. I had a feeling something was wrong because everything seemed out of place. So I snooped early in the morning before my workout. I felt bad about snooping at first, but I discovered the affair. The mist has cleared. Only for a new one to take its place. I sometimes wish I could go back in time to before that morning in order to remain clueless. I suppose ignorance, happiness, and all of that. I discovered a lengthy text history with huge white holes in discussion, which was a huge red flag. So I opened her Snapchat and realized they had a really long snap streak, which I had attempted so many times to start with her, makes sense now as to why we never had that streak. Here I discovered saved photos of him telling her he missed her, her telling him, I can't wait to kiss that face, missed her, and so on. It's incredibly difficult to locate nauseating material. The kind of stuff that makes your heart stop beating a thousand times in a second. I gulped for air and saw crimson. So I confronted her, and she awoke. It was 4 a.m., so I turned on the light, handed her the phone, and asked her to explain. Her first remarks were that she was furious that I had glanced through her phone. Gosh, the nerve. She claims they just kissed once. That was the final straw. Isn't it never just one kiss? After reading so much on this site, I've realized that they always offer you only a smidgen of the truth, never the whole truth. I'm not sure how I persuaded her to tell me they had, but when she did, she stated they had once in a car. And they only met a handful of times. I believe she recognized I knew more than she was letting on when I showed her her Google Maps history. She began to fill me in on additional specifics. How many times, as far as she's letting on, did they have, that he couldn't always get it up, that he wasn't good just different, whatever the that means. When I check through our phone records, I notice that her average number of texts per month has increased from 500 to 4,500. On their worst day, they texted each other every three minutes for 16 hours. She claims that the majority of their chat was just random how are you, how was your day, and hey, here's a music for you to listen to. 
I find it difficult to believe anything she says. When I question her why she did it, she initially says she was lonely and she felt like I didn't value her, but now she says I don't know, I was dumb, I was addicted and couldn't stop. To be clear, I am okay acknowledging that I was distant, but I have a difficult time accepting responsibility for this. She could have approached me at any time, hoisted her flag, and told me we were losing ground, and I would have battled to the death to make things right. She, on the other hand, selected him. She slid into him. She dated him, she him, and they both said they loved each other. Update. So at this time, I'd learned everything I needed to know. But that doesn't stop the wondering, the want to delve into the specifics. I'm starting to feel like a psychopath. I don't feel like myself. I'm desperate for power. That is not typical of me. I'm not that kind of person. I simply want her to tell me everything that I need to know. After hearing so many stories like mine, the spouse, whether man or woman, always wants to know the level of deception and the specifics of their cheating partner's behavior. I'm not the only one that feels this way. These attempts to deceive and trickle the truth to me are more vexing than the deeds she performed. I confronted him the day after I emailed everything to his wife. I sent everything. Everything. Everything he said was a lie. He claimed that my wife was making it all up because she was enamored with him and wanted to break them up so she could be with him. This enraged me. I wanted him to take responsibility for his actions. I'd been wanting to approach him for days, scare him, and damage him. I found him at work, stocking shelves, he works in retail. I got right up on him because his face was buried in a shelf. He's a little, pallid, and frail-looking man. Hey Chris. Jesus, the look on his face, I could only see his eyes and the bridge of his nose through his mask. The total terror in him felt so liberating. I mean, looking back, I don't think I needed to do this. But I'd be lying if I said it didn't feel good to reclaim what he helped steal from me. Why did you refuse my Snapchat, bud? I thought we should have shared everything? Watching him tremble and stumble backwards, with his little whimpering sigh, was like gold to me. That felt good, Jesus. I slammed him and informed him how much damage he had contributed to. He lied about what my wife had told me, despite the fact that I had documentation indicating they lied and cheated. You're a dumb coward. I told him, that felt fantastic. But what he said back almost stunned me. You are correct. I am a coward. How could I feel sorry for this poor little guy at that moment? I was truly sad for him. I would have done much more than just yell at him if he hadn't said that. Ugh. In my rage, I grabbed some of the peanut butter he had been storing and hurled it at his feet. I then walked away. Later, I discovered that his wife had arrived at his workplace immediately before I arrived. She dragged him outside and forced him to confess everything. She also called him a coward before slapping him. Hearing her tell me that day, she approached him just minutes before I did and called him the same name I did. He eventually admitted it, she said. And some of what my wife told me was corroborated by him. He apparently couldn't get it up a couple of times. Does that make things any better? No, it simply means that instead of four or five times, she informed me there was intent on a number of other occasions. In that moment, I realized that this man doesn't provide anything more than I do. In fact, he provides far less. I could go on and on about how I know I'm better than this guy, but that would be selfish and sad in the end. I truly feel sad for this guy, despite my aggravation and loathing for him. So, what does it leave her with? I'm not sure. She's made a lot of changes to get started. She cancelled and erased accounts, banned his phone number, and stated she'd be willing to obtain a flip phone instead if that would help. She doesn't mind if I check in on her, checking her phone and texts. For the time being, I believe it is justified, but I despise the fact that this is who I am. The adult is keeping an eye on the toddler to ensure she isn't breaking the rules. She's made me into something I'm not. She put my wedding ring on a necklace that she won't take off. During our D-Day battle, I removed the ring and informed her that I no longer desired it. This. This is something I was glad to see her do. 
She did it quietly and kept it beneath her shirt for a while before I recognized what she had done. I wanted to cry when I noticed it. It, if I still had any tears left, I'd cry just thinking about it. She says she'd like to go to therapy with me. I told her we couldn't move forward without it. We took a trip last weekend, just the two of us, to chat and attempt to be together. I'll admit that there was one day that weekend when everything just melted away, and I felt like I was back with my best friend. When we left and returned to town, it was as if a dark fog had returned over me. All of the doubts and thoughts never truly went away, the weekend away simply concealed them for a while. I'm starting to think she's apologetic, but I think all of the tickling truths and gaslighting have made it difficult for me to embrace any of that guilt. I'm curious why, if she was sincerely repentant, she would continue to conceal even the smallest details. As if I'm some helpless victim who can't handle it. The this has the sensation of a fundamental desire to me. In order to reclaim it, if that makes sense. It's not that I despise. It's really intense, and there's a lot of love there. There is melancholy. But it's incredible. It is also common. We've had so much that I think we've outdone ourselves even when we initially met and had no responsibilities. One thing that really irritates me is that for a long time, she and I would do minor play on her. She actually enjoys it. He apparently requested her for analgesics multiple times, to which she says they never did. She would never allow me actually put myself into her because she says I'm too big, despite the fact that he's smaller than me in all the specifics that have come out. She is suddenly open to the notion of after years of only using smaller toys and fingers during intercourse. She's suddenly fine with my putting myself inside of her. Perhaps she gave that intimate item to him and is now attempting to make amends with me by giving it to me. Or maybe she didn't give it to him and now wants to give it to me. How can I tell one way or the other? This concept bothers me a lot. Who knows how genuine all of stuff is? Is it because she's been apprehended? Is it because she is afraid of losing our family? Are you afraid of our eldest, at the very least, would not forgive her for a long time? She's old enough to understand, and our youngest may be just as old. In any case, kids don't want to hear what their mother did. Why was our family split up? This is something I always return to. They could have called it quits at any time, but they didn't. And if it hadn't been for me catching her, they could be in a parking lot right now. Will they be? So, for the time being, I'm leaving out of state to work remotely from a family member's home. I need the space, yet I'm terrified of it. It will take me a long time to digest everything. If I want to go forward, if it's even worthwhile to try. I want to watch her fight for me, but my heart sometimes gets in the way, and I give her too much. So far, I'm wondering if I'm being too easy on her. If I'm sacrificing too much and allowing her to avoid responsibility for what she did. Even if I was a distant husband, even if she was lonely, she was the one who started this voyage, not me. He was chosen by her, not by me. In my opinion, she abandoned me in the shower, staring at a wall, thinking if it would be easier to be dead.